Imagine you can control a robot with VR headset and controllers. You can have it play video games like Beat Saber. Or you can have it serve a cup of tea. How about serving your favorite cookies? And here's the fun part. You don't technically have to pay him because it's free labor. Alright, I'll pay you. And what if I told you this technology has infinite possibilities? It's the year of 2024. Humanoid robots are becoming more advanced and versatile. They can mimic human movements and take on tasks like logistics, healthcare, and disaster response. Teleoperation, which means the ability to control a robot remotely in real time, has shown great promises. It's like as if you are stepping into the robot, and with the wireless technology like 5G or even 6G, it's like extending your presence anywhere in the world. So why does teleoperation matter? You see, we humans excel at intuitions and reasonings, while the robots are precise and accurate. By combining both worlds, we could achieve high efficient tasks together. Take my intern experience as an example. When I was building a medical simulation with VR, I get to witness Da Vinci surgical robot in action. The surgeon stationed in another room was moving the controller like an orchestra conductor, and the robot follows the exact rhythm, cutting and suturing the patient with incredible accuracy. So I hope this gets you really excited about building robots in general. And let's get started. A couple months ago, I decided to go with a two degrees of freedom design that incorporates two servos, which allows for a compact configuration. And for the hands, it really is just a replica of the head as well. And here's what I mean. With the two servos placed horizontally and vertically, I can have the head rotate left to right and up to down. And if you look at the hands, they are very similar. I can have my hands go left and right and up and down. And that's really it. Next, we'll connect the servos to the Arduino as a microcontroller and connect that to the PC through USB port with serial communication. And from that, we will use our VR headset and controller to command our servo to follow our movement. Let's look at how we should talk to our robot. There are many ways to do it, through wire or wireless. Today, we're going to focus on wired, which uses USB and serial communication. When you plug in the USB to your computer, it establishes a single channel that allows two devices to send data to each other. And we will leverage this technique to send the data from our VR software on a computer to the Arduino. Moving on to the controller and the servo, they have different angle systems, so we need to apply linear mapping and translation. In addition, I would like to focus on another important aspect, that is to filter our angle data. When it comes to programming robots and sensors, it is crucial to have a clean data. On the top of the plot represents our controller input. You can see it is quite noisy or jittery. Now look what happens when I apply a moving average filter. It's a lot cleaner and smoother, isn't it? Okay, that pretty much concludes this section, and now we just have to program it for the rest of the servos. And remember to always test all of your servos in your code at each step of the way. For CADing, I am using Autodesk Fusion 360. I start by importing servo models, and they're in MASH files, so it was kind of hard to convert them to object files. The reason why I need object files is so I can rotate these servos easily, and you'll see why later on I was having so much trouble just to rotate them. Anyway, I keep catting and put some servos, and decided to move on. 
catting the head right here. It's just simple geometry. Geometry. <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of funny when I was drawing them. By the way, round shaped robots? They're just so cute and approachable. Don't you think? Finally, I went back to try to fix the joint state so I can rotate my servo correctly. You can see here, my servos just won't snap in the correct angle. Once I get it done, I can finally put the arms and have it wiggle wiggle to make sure they fit in the body. Alright, let's get it printed. By the way, do you guys use glue sticks? I may have just put a little too much on it and I couldn't pull the bottles out. Assemble time. You know, I shall call you T-Bot. Say hi T-Bot. Ah, just in time for snack after coding and building T-Bot for weeks. Nope, it's not time yet. Anyway, how are you feeling T-Bot? Let's check your head. Rotation looks Perfect. What about hand? Can you move me your hand? Perfect. Alright, test one. Can T-Bot serve tea? There you go. Give it a good three seconds dip. Almost there. Nice. Test 2. Can T-Bot pick up a small block? Oh yes it can. Easy peasy. Here's some bicep curls. By the way, in case you are wondering how I was able to see what T-Bot is doing, I enabled a webcam stream in Unity to get live visual feedback. In the future, I plan on adding the camera directly to T-Bot, so it can see. With all the testing completed, we are now on to the finale. Are you ready for us to perform a Beat Saber dance? Alright, please sit back and enjoy the show. Okay guys, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I had an absolute blast building T-Bot and there's so many things to learn from. In the future, I wanted to add more cameras and make it truly wireless so I can control it anywhere I want. But I want to hear from you and what's your favorite part about T-Bot. If you enjoyed this journey so far, please consider giving it a thumbs up. 
And if you want to see more robot builds in the future, consider subscribing. Thanks again, and until next time, signing off.